say to everybody that's true for you. That's not true for me. Is that right? <laughs> if we believe this, we can say that's true for you. But that's not true for me. What do you think about that? There is objective truth. What now? That's a negative. But that's true. But if you believe that, you can go that direction. You can go that direction and say, well, that's true for you. But that's not true for me. In the Old Testament, they didn't quite say it this way, but in the book of Judges, it says everybody did what was right in their own eyes. And somewhat, there is no ultimate truth if you believe this. There's no ultimate truth because everything is a perspective. It's an opinion. There's no ultimate truth. Now the question is, who in this room is ever going to understand ultimate truth? And that's what Keith is saying. None of us can grasp in our minds ultimate truth. But that doesn't disregard that there is an ultimate truth. Is that right? So how do we grasp ultimate truth? We have to be in touch with the one who is the truth. Otherwise, we're going to be falling all over the place. I mean, that is one of the big questions because I think, and to go back in here, sorry we're close, not wanting to hear, I believe it is very difficult in this generation, in this culture, to follow God when we don't understand it. Because I don't understand it. Nor do I like it, nor do I agree with it. And since I don't understand it or like it or don't agree with it, it's hard for me to go there and I end up not going there. Because I don't grasp it. So how do we cross over? It says here in Timothy, and this is in Timothy, 2 Timothy 3. You may as well know this, Timothy, that in the last days it's going to be very difficult to be a Christian. I'm sorry, I, I needed to make that font bigger, obviously. I, I'm seeing that. For people who love only themselves and their money, they will be proud and boastful, sneering at God, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful to them, and thoroughly bad. They will be hard headed and never give in to others. They will be constant liars, troublemakers, and will think nothing of immorality. They, they will be rough and cruel and sneer at those who are trying to be good. They will betray their friends. They will be hot-headed, puffed up with pride, prefer good times to worshiping God. Yes, they, they, they will go to church, yes, but they won't really believe anything they hear. They never understand the truth. They won't hear. They hear, but they don't hear. And this is, a, this is a, the Amplified the Phillips on those, on 5 and 7, what we just read. Although they hold a form of piety, true religion, they look good on the outside, even though they go to church, 
and have a lot of the trappings of religion, they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. Their conduct belies their genuine profession. They are forever inquiring and getting information, but never able to arrive at the recognition and knowledge of the truth. They can't break through. They can't get free. They don't understand. They don't get it. They're religious, but they're not free. They don't get Jesus. They can't really come to Him. They've got things in their life that are not working at all as far as following God. Or in the Phillips translation, they will maintain a facade of religion, but their contact will deny its validity. They are always learning and yet never able to grasp their truth. Their minds are distorted. This will happen in God's church. If that's happening in God's church, we know it's happening in the world. Now Jesus says this same thing as he's quoting Isaiah. In Mark chapter 4, the 12 ask about the stories. This is in the middle of this parable of the sower. Jesus shared the parable of the sower. And then right after this he says, you've been given insight into God's kingdom. You know how it works. But to those who can't see it yet, everything comes in stories, creating readiness, nudging them toward receptive insight. These are people whose eyes are open but don't see a thing. Whose ears are open but don't understand a word. Who avoid making a bad face getting forgiven. They may look and look but they don't see. They may listen and listen but they will not understand. If they did, they will turn back to God and He would forgive them for the wrong things they have done. We see, but we don't see. We hear, but we don't hear. Have you experienced that in your Christian life? I hear, at least in the Bible, what God says. But my life hasn't changed. I'm not following. I hear, but I don't hear. I see, but I don't see. I don't get it. Why is this? Why is it so difficult about understanding? What is so difficult about understanding and following the message of Jesus? Why? I mean, I think we all have heard it. We've seen it. We've read it. But we know if we don't obey it on a deep level, we don't get it. Why is that? Let's go into our little groups. And then I'd like to hear what you have to say about that. Why? What's so difficult about understanding and following the message of Jesus? 